We're talking Jasper's baseball. This is episode seven already. We still haven't had a home game. I'm Mark Renee. That's the head coach of the Manhattan College Jasper's baseball team, Dave Miller. Coach, again, it seems we have this running theme, which I'm sure will change at some point, but not the results you wanted the last four against Columbia and GW, but in those four games, you did get two quality starts, so you have to be at least a little bit happy with that aspect, right? Yeah, Will Hesslink went out on, on Saturday and gave us six, six strong, um, and, you know, O'Neal, game two on Sunday, another quality start. I mean, we're getting good pitching. We just got to figure out and piece the whole thing together. I mean, uh, you know, we hit one day, we don't pitch. We pitch one day, we don't hit. So now the team's got to come together as we get into conference, um, they got to, they got to piece it all together. Really frustrating game, two of that doubleheader on Sunday. We won't get into the details, but Jack Mahoney looked really sharp out of the bullpen that game. Yeah, he's been coming on as our as our biggest guy off the bench uh, to come out of the bullpen and give us quality innings. He's he's becoming our go-to guy at this point, and uh, you know he came out and and closed Hessling's start on Saturday and finished the game strong for us in game two Sunday. Uh, it's been great to see from a kid. Uh, he's really been working hard to get his stuff together. All right, let's catch up on the injury updates. Uh, what's the situation with Jack Lynch, who uh, <coughs> hurt his ankle pretty bad in that first yeah. game of Texas? Yeah, uh, Jack is. We're probably still four to, f you know, four to five weeks away from Jack, but it seems like the injury bug's becoming a little contagious for us this weekend. Uh, you know, we're we're a few men few men down right now, so it's it, we've got to figure out some things. Today's practice, as a matter of fact, is we're going to go put some catchers out in the infield to see if they can do it. Um, just simply because we are out of infielders. Steve Travaglini, as yep. a matter of fact, wound up playing some first base on Sunday. Uh, he's one of those catchers yep. that was forced into the uh, yeah, and in <clears throat> we had we had Nick Plew, who's, who's our third string catcher, is, is played second base, and we had Steve Travaglini pay, play first base. Uh, Unfortunately, Zahan Meyer tore his men meniscus in practice. He'll be out for the year. Uh, Stover, you know, he has an elbow injury. He'll be out for a few weeks. And then, you know, Ryan Ash swung a bat as a pinch hitter and, and pulled his oblique. So he's going to be out a couple of weeks. So um, we're banged up. Um, but, you know, we've got to find a way. We always talk about it in, the coach as in our coaching staff meetings, next man up. So these guys got to pull together, and some guys are going to be asked to play some positions that they're not accustomed to, but, you know, the game doesn't stop. But you've also, in that regard, seen some guys who were not supposed to be playing certain positions. We talked about a couple of them last week who actually slid over and, and did a real nice job for you. Yeah, Daniel Perez, you know, oh, a couple weeks ago, Ryan Ash going from third to first to short has been outstanding and now we're asking Daniel Perez who's been our you know basically our steady second baseman all year he's now going to have to move over and play shortstop and we're going to have to have some guys step up and play some positions they're not used to playing so um, you know we're not in the best place to be right now but that's no excuse these guys they're going to get their opportunities to play and we tell every guy every day's a new opportunity so some of these guys are going to get a chance to get some at-bats, and hopefully some good things can happen. And obviously you've got the outfield situation squared away. Knock on wood, it'll stay like that health-wise, but uh, can't ignore Peter Ocher's weekend, 4 of 8 on Sunday, after a little bit of a hiccup. He was 0 for 9 the previous two games. That's going back to last Wednesday at Columbia and then Saturday's series opener, which ended for him an 11-game hitting streak. Yeah. That was the streak we talked about actually last week, and then it got snapped on Wednesday. Yeah. Sorry, Pete. Yeah, well, Pete, I mean, Pete's seen the ball really well. Um, again, I think Pete is as frustrated as, as maybe some of us coaches are, and he's trying to do too much at times. You know, he, you know, he had an opportunity uh, first and third on Sunday in the bottom of the eighth, uh, and he chased a pitch that he normally wouldn't chase, and he rolled into a double play. And, you know, and Pete was the first one to come up to me and say like, he, he just is trying to hit a 10-run home run with nobody on base. And we've got to understand that this game is one pitch at a time. Right now, you know, the, you know, the chips aren't falling in our direction. You know, we're having some bad luck. We're not getting some wins. So guys are starting to put a little too much pressure on themselves. And, you know, like we're getting into conference right now. So this weekend with St. Peter's and, and LIU tomorrow, 
it, you know, we've got to put all that behind us and understand, yeah, it, it, you know, we're 6-16. Six and 16. It's, This is not what I was expecting. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, our, our season starts this week. Really, on Friday with the game at St. Peter's, right? Yeah. That's You've been talking about this now for the last month plus, that the main focus is going to be the MAC games, which begin against the Peacocks this weekend in Jersey City. Catch all the action on uh, Mac Sports TV, and uh, you can find the link on the stpeterspeacocks.com website. And of course, our home opener finally is coming up. We've got a little under two weeks now, but or actually I should say, yeah, it's a little under two weeks, a little over one week, but whatever the case, can't get here fast enough. No, we've gone a whole, almost half our season is already complete, and we still haven't played a home game. So that's, uh, I'm going to say that's unusual, to say the least, yeah. but I mean, it, it is what it is. We, you know, I'm, I'm just a coach and a guy that I, I don't make excuses for anything, but, you know, like, just a, a lot of weird things have been happening with, the, you know, with the Jaspers, and we've got to get through this and start playing some good baseball. You're at the 22-game mark, about halfway through your season. What's your impression of what you've seen on the field so far? Uh, Aside from the results, which uh, inconsistent. Kind of I mean, I, like it just uh, we've just got to put it all together. The talent's there, not you know. And again, it, does that fall on me? I have to do a better job of coaching these guys up. Um, so yeah, I'll take one hundred percent of that responsibility. I always will. But we just have to be more consistent. Uh, you know, we we go out and we pitch well one day, and we don't pitch well the next. We hit well one day, and we don't hit well the next. We just have to, you know. I think that can happen sometimes when you when you're taking a, a few more L's than W's. Is guys hit the panic button, and when they hit the panic button, that's usually when trouble happens. I'm checking my notes just to confirm. Outside of the four errors in the second game on Sunday, the defense seems to have improved by and large. Yeah, we have to keep getting better. I mean, um, you know, I, I look at uh, game one on Will Starter couple baseballs snuck through the infield that I don't think should have snuck through the infield. So, you know, sometimes I, I want us to, to always understand that the two things that we can do as a player is, is control our attitude and our effort. And so I think our effort sometimes needs to step up. Our attitude, you know, has to stay the same, you know, even when things are going bad. Um, but the, the, there's a lot of positives that are happening with, with the Jaspers, but I think we just have to put it all together and just be more consistent. And you've got the rotation where you want it right now. Is it sort of or as set as it can be heading into conference? Yeah, I think it's pretty set right now. I think we've done a good job of establishing who our weekend rotation is, who our midweek rotation is, who our bullpen guys are. Uh, I think we have a pretty good idea of where our outfield is set, but you know when we're dealing with all these – you know, injuries, it's just, you know, it just seems like a revolving door of can these guys step up and get it done. Yeah. What do you know about uh, LIU? I know I saw them play St. John's a couple of weeks ago. They gave up 22 runs, but that's not really their team. No, no, you know, that, LIU, that's an outlier. Ever since LIU merged with Post and LIU Brooklyn merged, I mean, Dan is a very good coach. Um, you know, he he's a good recruiter, and he, he finds a way. You know, you can't sleep on this team. You know, even though they might not have the record that they're used to having, um, you've got to be ready to play the game. So, And how do you put the league on notice with a statement at St. Peter's this weekend? we got to come out and just go all in. I mean, it's just, you know, if we want to talk like a poker game, we're going to go all in on every pitch. we just we got to play hard, we got to hustle, we got to leave it all out there. You know, these kids... You know, the Jaspers, we talk about winning, and what we need to do is uh, the time for talk is over. We're now at conference. You know, these guys want to be a postseason team where they got to step up. We as coaches got to step up. They do as players, and we just got to go out and get it done. All right, before we leave, I did a Richmond St. John's doubleheader last weekend, and the Spiders head coach is a guy, obviously, you coached against. Uh, when you were at LaSalle in Tracy Woodson, who said, oh, make sure you ask him about softball. So <laughs> I have to ask about your softball exploits. Apparently, uh, you have uh, decovered several softballs over the course of your uh, barnstorming career. Yeah, I, I mean, I, softball, I mean, if you ever get a chance to watch high-level competitive softball, it is a fun sport to be around. I mean, 
There is learning how to hit backside, learning how to hit holes, five-man infields. I mean, it's a crazy sport that I absolutely fell in love with. Um, but I was a guy that started playing the game when most people are retiring. I started playing competitive softball at 40, but what I found out that I could do is I could hit a softball further than most. Uh, so I, I enjoyed the home run derbies, and I got put on these teams to get up there and see how far I could hit a ball. So I well, Tracy it. was telling me his dad went up against uh, Eddie Fagner, of course, who <laughs> was the world-famous uh, pitcher, and, and he used to throw from basically in front of second base to home plate and no, strike what? guys out. Did you ever have a chance to face no, him? No, not, nothing like that. I mean, but I faced some, some guys who, um, you know, I don't know if, you know, a guy like Justin Mooch is a pitcher that I remember as a, a stud pitcher from New Jersey, but he could 360 throw from between his legs behind his back and, oh, and throw him for strikes, wow. you know, and just absolutely was fun to watch. And, you know, I'll, I'll pull up some video from you sometime, but, you know, the, the knuckleballs that some of these high-level pitchers oh, throw yeah. is, or is insane. Really good stuff. Well, if we ever have a rain delay at Clover Stadium, we may have to call on your uh, softball hitting skills to uh, pass the time. <laughs> we had a home run derby. Very funny story. We had a home run derby. The uh, the Boulders hosted the Can-Am Frontier League All-Star Game before they merged the leagues together. And so they had a home run derby. It was Mookie Wilson, John Flaherty, and I think Jesse Barfield was the third. None of them hit a home run. There were zero home runs hitting the home run derby. <laughs> so I'm thinking Dave Miller should have shown up and hit some softballs for home runs, well, and that would have been the show. Yeah, I, I, I'll show you some videos, some YouTube videos sometimes of some of our uh, long-haul bomber events in, uh, on YouTube. Look forward to it. Listen, good luck tomorrow against LIU. Good luck this weekend when you open conference play in the MAC at St. Peter's. And we'll do this again next week, and we'll be leading up to finally the home opener up at Clover Stadium. Can't wait. Awesome. That's the head coach, Dave Miller. I'm Mark Renee. We'll talk to you next time as we talk Jaspers baseball here on GoJaspers.com.